Shmas, Sarifka, Bas Yisrael Aaron Cheshen, as well as Esther Bas Shloima Flint, Yisrael Eliezer Ben Avram Akiva Rosen, Etel Bas Shalom Ben, Yosef Ben Avram Shmaria, as Esther Blima Bas Menachem Mendel, Hinda Bas Shloima Halevi. Chal Yisrael is Neuheg, as we all know, as Paskind in the Mishnah Bura, quoting the Arizal, the Talmidei of the Arizal, Koydem boi lebeis haknesses, before a person enters the beis haknesses. Be'od shu adayin bechotzer beis haknesses, be'beis a person should say, be'beis elokim ne'alech b'regesh, v'yargish v'yirta, a person should enter beis haknesses with the appropriate understanding, the appropriate yira. V'yirta atzmu b'hikonso b'is ha-knesses m'iroiv pachdoi v'yamtin v'yishem me'at v'yoymer v'ani b'iroiv chastecha ovoi b'isecha ishtacha v'el heichel kodshecha b'yir o'secha We know that we are makdim, we introduce these words of v'ani b'iroiv chastecha ovoi b'isecha ishtacha v'el heichel kodshecha b'yir o'secha with a pasuk from this week's parasha, the pasuk, of course, of Matoivu Alecha Yaakov Mishkan Yisecha Yisrael. That means that Minag Yisrael has it, that we understand that the way that a person prepares for entering the base Hashem, the way a person prepares their understanding that he's about to engage in tefillah on a level which is Bibes Hashem, and he's being afforded the opportunity to be able to daven in the house of the Rabbanu Shalom. How does one prepare himself? How does one bring to, to his attention the significance of the moment of simply entering the Beis HaKnesses with the words, Matoivu Olecha Yaakov Mishkanoi Secha Yisrael. After all, the Gemara tells us, in Mesecha Sanhedrin, Matoivu Olecha Yaakov Mishkanoi Secha Yisrael, Elu Batei Kneisiyos U Batei Midrashos. This is referring to the shuls, the Batei Kneisiyos and the Batei Midrashos. As I just mentioned, many had the custom to start with Vani Bereiv Chastecha. They wouldn't begin with Matoivu Olecha Yaakov. In fact, if you look at the Chuvas Maharshal, the Chuvas Maharshal, he argues that it's incorrect to start with Matoivu Olecha Yaakov. Ube Boiker, he writes, Kishani Bolebeis Akneses, Maschal Ani Bepasuk Vani Bereiv Chazdecha. I begin with the Pasuk Vani Bereiv Chazdecha. Ume Dalek HaPasuk HaOi Rishon Matoivu Olecha Yaakov. And I skip the Pasuk of Matoivu. Sheomru Bilam. After all, where does it come from? It comes from Bilam Arasha. Va'avhu Amrei Leklala. And his intention when saying it was to say it as a Klala for Klala Yisrael. Because the Yisrael of Perakhele, because the Gemara tells us an Hedron. So I'm going to begin my experience of my encounter engaging the Rabbanu Shalom in the morning. But the Pasuk from Bilam Harasha, where he was intending to curse Klala Yisrael, says the Shuvas Marashal, incorrect. It's not appropriate. Therefore begin, Vani Biroiv Chastacha. But as we mentioned, that most of the Gedoyim, as is Minag Yisrael, says that no, in fact, we begin with Matoivu Olecha Yaakov. You take a look at the Torah Tamimos, Perish Al Hasidr, the Sparach Sha'omar, and he writes that perhaps the reason that we begin with the Psukim of Bilom is precisely that. If you want to appreciate all that there is to a base HaKnesses, a base HaMedrish, so then it means even more when it's coming from Bilom Arasha. It's one thing if we appreciate the base HaKnesses, a base HaMedrish. But if we express, even Bilom Arasha understood, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov Mishkan Yisrochi Yisrael, the importance of base HaKnesses and base HaMedrish, so that is an even greater experience expression of, that is even a greater expression of the chashivas, the significance of these places, and specifically that's why we pick these words that came out of the mouth of Bilam as opposed to many other words, as he points out throughout Tanakh, that we could use. So let's understand what it is that is unique about these words, specifically spoken by Bilam HaRasha. What was Bilam HaRasha's 
point in reciting these words and focusing on Bate Knesias, Bate Midrashas, which Lechora we didn't even have at that time, right? They had the Mishkan, they didn't have Bate Knesias or Bate Midrashas. So what do Chazal see that Bil Marasha is commenting on when he sees Klal Yisrael? And based on what he sees in Klal Yisrael, he praises Klal Yisrael, a praise which Chazal understand could be related to us by praising Bate Knesias and Let's understand the depth of what Chazal are trying to give us in terms of insight into the words of Bilam Harash. And I think that this is really becomes very clear when we notice what seems to be a stira, a contradiction in the words of Chazal. Chazal take this pasuk, Matoivu Ohalecha Yaakov Mishkenoisecha Yisrael. What is the Chepasuk referring to? Matoivu Alecha Yaakov, how good are your tents? Yaakov, Mishkanai Secha, your dwelling places, Yisrael. What is this referring to? What's this Pasuk referring to? So we are all familiar with Tuma Mori Chazal, yet very often we somehow don't seem to ask ourselves the question that these Tuma Mori Chazal seem to be a contradiction one to the other. On the one hand, we all know Rashi Alatayra. Rashi is quoting a Mesecha, Gemara and Mesecha is Baba Bas. The Gemara tells us in Meseches Baba Basra, what is this referring to? What did Bilam see that he says, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov says Rashi, Al Shera'a Pischeim She'enan Michuvanim Zeh Mol Zeh. What did he see? That their windows and the doors of the tents weren't open up to each other. There was a certain level of Tznius that Klal Yisrael were Makbedan that was above and beyond the standard of society at the time. And that is what Bilam is praising. If you take Rashi at face value, what the Pasuk Matavu Alecha Yaakov is referring to is Matavu Alecha Yaakov, the tents which you, Klal Yisrael, are dwelling in. These tents are beautiful because the level of Tznias, the standard of Tznias, is something which requires or could express Matavu Alecha Yaakov about them. So it seems to be talking about the tents in which Klal Yisrael lived. Yet, we know, as I just mentioned a few moments ago, the Gemara tells us in Mesech Sanhedrin that what Bilam was referring to was not the tents in which Klal Yisrael was dwelling, were dwelling, but what Bilam was referring to, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov Mishkanoisecha Yisrael, the reason why we recite this as we enter Beis Hashem, as we enter the Beis HaKnes, is because Chazal understand that this Pasik is referring to Bati Kineisiyois U Bati Midrashais. So I ask you, what is it? Was Bilam commenting on the homes of Klal Yisrael? Matoivu Alecha Yaakov Oyalecha was referring to your oilim in which you live lived and the houses, the doorways weren't open up one to, not, one to another, the level of Tznias? Or when Bilam was commenting, he was commenting on something about Elu Bate Kinesiyo Isve Elu Bate Midrashis. Which one is it? So in truth, the question is really compounded by the fact that if you look up these Gemaras, you'll see that Rashi seems to be making a saying something very, very mechudosh over here. We would think that Rashi is just quoting the Gemara. The Gemara tells us that Klal Yisrael's tents weren't mechuvanos, that entranceways, the windows weren't open one to another. So it seems like a beautiful thing, and that's what he was talking about when he says, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov. However, if one takes a look at the Gemara that Rashi is quoting, the Gemara Mesech is Baba Basra, the Gemara says, Minahani Mili, how do we know that we don't enter, we don't keep a doorway or, or windows, we don't open up one neighbor to another? Minahani Mili, Amre B'yaychanan, Da Amre Kra, Vayisa Bilam Es Einav, Vayares Yisrael Shaychen Lishvatov. Ma Ra'a, what did Bilam see? Ra'a She'en Pischei Ahaleyem Mechuvanim Zelazeh. What did he see? He saw that their doorways, their windows were not open to each other. What Pasuk indicates to Chazal that Kal Yisrael were living on a certain standard of Tznias? It seems to be from Chazal, the Gemara quotes a Pasuk, Vayisab Bilam es Einav Vayares Yisrael Shoychem Lishvatov. That Pasuk tells us that they were living in with a certain standard of Tznias which was above and beyond. That has nothing to do with the Pasuk, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov. 
So why when Rashi quotes this Gemara, Rashi should quote it on this Pasuk. Vayisa Bilam Eseina Vayar. And he sees the Shvatim, Shoich and the Shvatim. So what Rashi should say right over there? Because they were living with a level of Tzniyas. The windows, the doorways weren't open to each other. But Rashi takes that Gemara. He cuts out the Pasuk so that you could read Chumash Rashi without being, b- being bothered. Rashi takes the Gemara, which is referring to a Pasuk, a different Pasuk in the Parsha. And he almost cuts and pastes it and leaves it as his perush on the pasuk Matoivu Alecha Yaakov. And we know Chazal understand Matoivu Alecha Yaakov is talking not about the tents. Matoivu Alecha Yaakov is referring to Batekene Siyos and Bati Midrashos. So what's going on over here? Is Matoivu Alecha Yaakov referring to Batekene Siyos and Bati Midrashos? Is referring to the home? It seems that Chazal understood that no, Willam saw the homes, he saw the Klal Yisrael was living, but that's not what he was referring to when he said, That was a separate Pasuk, that was Vayisa Einav, he saw Klal Yisrael. Then when he commented, He was referring to Abate Knesiyos, Ubate Midrashas. So how do we understand? How do we understand what in fact the depth of the Pasuk of Matoi Alecha, a Pasuk which we say every single day as the Mishnah Bura quotes it, how are we supposed to understand what Chazal were trying to tell us? Were Chazal saying that this was a description of the homes of Klal Yisrael, the tents in which they lived? Or were Chazal saying that no, this is a description of Bate Kinesios and Bate Midrashos? So I think in, in, in reality, really both are true. And this is something which I've mentioned in the past in the name of my father, but I think it's a beautiful idea worthwhile repeating and worthwhile taking a step further to understand the questions that we just raised. If you take a look at the psukim after Matoivu Alecha Yaakov, very beautiful poetic psukim, but seems to be a bit verbose. The psukim say, Stretching out like brooks, Ark Scroll translates, like gardens by the river. Klal Yisrael are being compared to like gardens by a river. Says the Pasuk, Like cedar by, a, by the water. What Klal Yisrael is being described over here, the Psukim say they're being described to like gardens by a brook, like cedars when it comes on the water, like a beautiful fragrance that comes out from different flowers. So why are these things being chosen? What does the, the Psukim even specifically mean? What is the Psukim trying to It's beautiful, it's beautiful poetry. But what is exactly are the Psukim trying to describe? What exactly are these things trying to express to the to Klal Yisrael, about Klal Yisrael? So perhaps the idea is as follows. If you take a look at these specific things, the things that Klal Yisrael is being described, being compared to, a brook of water, being compared to the odor, a beautiful fragrance, like big cedar trees, these are all things which have significant span of influence. They're able to, their influence goes well beyond the source. You have a core which is very strong and because the core is very strong, whether it be a a brook where the water is rushing out of, if the water is rushing out with a strength from the source of the water, it will go far and it will have very far-reaching consequences and be able to influence far. If you have a cedar tree, it has a very, very firm foundation, a trunk, so then it will be able to shed, should be able to spread its its uh, leaves, be able to spread its shade very far out and be able to influence as well. What Bilam was saying over here well, is that Klal Yisrael is compared to these things that they are strong in their home and therefore the influence of their home goes well beyond. And I would tweak it a little bit and say that what Bilam was saying was as follows. Klal Yisrael, what Bilam was arguing was yes, 
Bilam saw and witnessed a tremendous level of tzniyas in Kal Yisrael. He saw their homes, and the homes were something to speak of. Their level of tzniyas in the home was something to behold. But Bilam went a step further, and Bilam said, but where did this come from? How is it possible that they have such homes? How is it possible that there are homes which are infused with Kedusha? So Bilam says, if their homes are infused with Kedusha to this degree, it has to be that there's a source. What is the source? What is the stronghold? What is the foundation? What is the source of that Kedusha? Elu so Bilam was witnessing the tents of Klal Yisrael. But from witnessing the tents and the beauty of the tents of Klal Yisrael, what Bilam was able to understand was that these are tents which are infused with Kedusha. Where do they get this Kedusha? Because these are tents which surround a Mishka. And Bilam said from that point on he understands what's the Koyach of Klal Yisrael? The Koyach of Klal Yisrael is their home. But where does the Kedusha in their home come from? Where are they able to draw such Kedusha from? They're able to draw that Kedusha from the Mishkan of which the homes surround. And when there is no Mishkan and there is no Beis HaMikdash, so where are they going to get this Kedusha from? They're going to get the Kedusha from Eilu Bate Knesi or Subate Midrashais. So it's not a stira. Chazal say, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov is referring to Bate Knesiyos U Bate Midrashais. And Rashi says, Matoivu Alecha Yaakov is referring to the homes of Kal Yisrael and the Tzniyas in the homes. What Chazal are telling us is that yes, Bilam witnessed the Tzniyas in the homes, but from the homes he was able to detect that these homes have a connection to Amakam Kaddish. These homes are drawing their Kedusha from a source of Kedusha. Just like these items have a source, have a foundation, a stronghold in the center, and therefore it permeates beyond. So, Elu Bate Knesio Su Bate Midrashe Shevichal Yisrael. The Bate Knesios and Bate Knesios and Bate Midrashe of Kal Yisrael are not just bastions of Kedusha, but they're Chashivas. Their significance is that you could see that Kedusha permeates the homes of Kal Yisrael. What Bilam was witnessing was not just the Kedusha and the Beis HaKnesses and Beis HaMedrash, but that those Bati Knesios and Bati Midrashos and the Kedusha and the religious and spiritual experiences of the, what took place in those places, that permeated the individual homes. That's where the Kedusha came from. That's where the Tzniyas came from. Matoivo Alecha Yaakov Mishkanaisecha Yisrael, as Rashi says, was referring to the beautiful homes, the homes of Kedusha that Kali Yisrael had. But where do those homes of Kedusha come from? Chazal say, Eilu bate knesios and bate medrash. Where does the Kedusha come from? It comes because from there, from homes which surround the base Akneshe, surround the base, surround the base medrash. So the Karmoinim come and they say, before you walk into a base Knesset, we are going to begin with the words of Bilam Harasha. Because the words of Bilam Harasha are much more than just expressing our appreciation for being able to enter a base Hashem, for being able to daven in the home of the Rabbanu Shalom. It's much more than just realizing the opportunity when you walk into this room. But the words of Bilam Harasha make a person think and make a person contemplate that when I walk into the room, the Beis HaKnesses, the Beis HaMedrash, it's not just about the five, ten minutes, the hour, the two hours that I spend in the room, but the Kedusha that I'm engendering, the Kedusha that I'm fostering in this room has to be brought with me to the rest of my life. Whether it be in the office, whether it be in the home. It has to be that from watching my home, you're able to detect this is a person that has a connection to Bate Knesiyos U Bate Midrashis. I think it's very likely if you take a look at the Gemara in Sanhedrin, which describes this whole episode of how Bilam ultimately caught Kali Yisrael and was machshul them in the Avera. It says that Bilam had a plan, and his plan was, says the Gemara, fascinating the Gemara, the plan was, Bilam told Balak, what you're going to do is, you're going to build Kla'im, and you're going to put tents, 
And in these tents, you're going to put zoinas. And ultimately, you're going to draw Klal Yisrael into these tents, and they're going to be seduced by the zoinas. And you're reading the Gemara, and it's a strange Gemara. Why is he talking about tents? Just say, you have a zoina on the street, and you're going to seduce Klal Yisrael. What the Gemara is saying, the Gemara uses the Lashon of Klaim. What's the Lashon of Klaim? That's the term we use when we're referring to the tent around the Oyam Oyad, around the Mikdash. Because what the Gemara is saying is that Bilam realized that the way to be machshel klal Yisrael is to have them sink to a lower level of depravity. But how do I do that? How do I take the Kedusha out of their home? There's only one way. To cut them off from the source of the Kedusha. That they're no longer living and connected to these Bate Kinesius and Bate Midrashes. So he says you have to build a whole new tent. You have to build a new area for them to live and there they'll be seduced. You just bring a zayna into the street, it's not going to connect, they're not going to be nichsho because they're still connected to Bate Knesiyah, so Bate Midrashes. The secret that Bilam realizes, a secret that Chazal want us to think about every time we enter Beis HaKnesis and Beis HaMedjish. Ma'toivu alecha Yaakov Mishkan Yisecha, the beauty of Elu Bate Knesiyah, so Bate Midrashes and Klai Yisrael that Bilam saw. The Chiddush that Bilam witnessed was not just the beauty of the Beis Knesset, the Beis HaMedrash, but what he was so taken by was that that Kedusha was able to be brought and drawn out from those strongholds of Kedusha, from those places of Kedusha, and they permeated the individual homes of Kal Yisrael. Matoivu alecha Yaakov Mishkan Yisech Yisrael. The kedusha of your private homes, Klal Yisrael. How beautiful they are. Why? Elu bate kinesiyah isu bate midrashos. Bilam says, as long as a Jewish home is connected to a stronghold, to a bastion of kedusha, to a beis haknesses, a beis hamedrash, you'll be able to witness the kedusha in the home. Once the home is cut off from that bastion of Kedusha, that's when there begins to have problems. That's what Bilam ultimately realized, and unfortunately, Kalyus, Bilam was successful in having Kalyus so cut off from that Kedusha, and that's where the problems begin.